just about sailing some month, someday, who knows, nobody knows anymore. This is a very, this is going to be a short video, it's not particularly about sailing, um, so do, do switch off, I won't be upset if you don't watch it, but <laughs> there's something I've mentioned before a couple of times that I really wanted to get, um, I've had my guitar on the boat for quite some time, in this case I think you just see it in the corner, it's my lovely Martin guitar. Um, and I wanted to get a boat, a base on the boat, which I've got. I've got a cheap, I don't remember what it's called, Ibanez, which I've upgraded the pickups to, so if that dies, it doesn't matter. Where, even so, I've got a big case for it. But what I really want to do, and this is the problem, is I've always wanted to, wanted to for a very long time, play the double bass. I did used to have one, I've showed this photograph before, never really learned to play it. In fact, what I used to do, and if any of my old band members are watching, I do apologise. I set it up so you could just, it just made thudding noises. Dub, 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 dub. We used to use it for 20 Fly Rock when we did it, and that was all. And people used to come up to me afterwards and say, oh, great bass playing, man. No, I was just, just making thudding noises. Sorry, this is a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, very bad picture, but you can see the problem. It's, it's that tall, and Serenity's headroom, I can, I can touch the top of my head. But the problem isn't so much about the headroom, it's about the width room. How do you fit? It's, it's a bit like trying to keep your tender down below. It'll just take up all the space. So I've been trying to come up with a solution to how to have a double bass on board uh, without taking up all the room. <coughs> so there is a solution, there is an answer. There's a company out there, and this is a startup, and I think these things look all right. Uh, I think it's called Travel Base, one of these things. It's delightfully made, <coughs> it's kind of not really like a double bass, I think it's tolerable. And it comes in a case actually that's, that's even smaller than the, you know, it's, it's a sort of, it's almost luggage, uh, overhead type luggage that you put in an aeroplane. Um, the problem is, it's 4,000, what, dollars, pounds, 4,000 anything is too much, that's sort of half the price of Serenity. The other solution is even worse, and it's one of these. This is, I'm not even going to say what it is, it's a sort of stick-based thing. I think they look horrible. I, I would not, I'm simply not allowing anything like that anywhere near my boat or anywhere near me. I'm sorry, but it just, and if you're upset by this because I know a lot of people like these things, then apologies, but that's just the way it is. So, I was browsing, bizarrely, without my glasses the other day, and I thought, here's a chance to actually get my woodworking skills up at the same time as getting bass together. So I've, I've ordered a kit and it's just arrived. And I know that it's big enough because it had a, a sort of a man standing next to it. Um, but it claimed to be quite small and it, it really is quite small because it's arrived in a small box like this. Um, contents, wooden components, shaped and drilled. That's great for me because I don't really do woodwork. Sandpaper, PVA glue, parts list. Comprehensive instructions from 9 to 90 years old. I just fit into that category. Uh, skill levels. Well, I haven't really played the double bass before. It's beginner, intermediate, confident and advanced. It says it's confident. Well, I'm rubbish, but I am confident. So um, let's go ahead and, um, and make this thing and see how this goes then. Right, let's just... Um, yeah, this is, I'm, in, I'm looking forward to this. I can't quite see how we're going to get a double bass out of something this size. But anyway... Okay, so I've got everything I need. I've got my tools. Uh, I've got the instructions. These look really good, actually. Really good. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I, I would say that the, you know, I know a bit about the internal construction of double bass, and that does look a little bit strange. But what does surprise me is this is actually normally for this sort of price. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, normally for this sort of price, you'd expect. A laminated top and I think this is actually a solid top although well, it's difficult to say because again I haven't got my right glasses on but even at this stage that sounds better than the noise I used to make so now I knew that it didn't come with strings and I can't get it out that's the neck uh, now I, you know I'm no expert on these things but the normal for three-quarter size base the neck String length is about 41 inches, which is, um, so, anyway, ye of little faith, let's get on with this and um, 
Oh, I better start at one rather than six. Let's see what happens. Really looking forward to this real wood double. That's unusual. I've never seen that before. It kind of comes in two halves, and I guess I have to hollow it out. Or is that? I don't know. Well, this is several hours later, and I've, I've got a neck, although I'm still not convinced about the size. And I don't even see that, but the, the sound post seems to be going across the base rather than back to front and I've got no idea what this gubbins is but hey ho what do I know carry on clamping the neck I wasn't looking forward to this bit because you normally need two people and you're actually supposed to use hide glue for most of these jobs so it can be overcome but I used PVA simply because I needed to do it quite quickly. I wasn't actually expecting that a clothes peg would hold it in place, but um, still, and there's this strange mechanism which I assume is to make it louder because it is slightly smaller than a full size one. Ta da! I have finished. Very happy with that. Just need to set the strings. I've ordered some, they should be arriving in the next couple of days, so <coughs> really waiting to hear what that sounds like. Um, now normally, when you, you probably know this, but when you make something out of a kit or whatever, you, you have a couple of parts left over. I've actually got lots of parts left over, but I have followed the instructions pretty much rigorously, so I don't know what's... Um... Oh, there's more. Okay. So there's this... I don't know how necessary it is. It's probably just sort of enhancements or something, but there's... Um... So anyway, well, while I'm waiting for the strings, I might as well do the rest of this, and then I shall string it up. And I advise you put on a set of good earphones or uh, earplugs, which, what do I mean? And yeah, let's, um, let's get this together and in the next clip we'll see how it actually sounds. Sorry, and it's sitting by me rather than standing by me. That was the joke. But as I say, I haven't really played one of these things before. And um, even though Shutterstock were good enough to get me a, um, a virtual studio, studio sort of out, I thought that my performance just then was a little bit wooden. And yeah, that was me. I know you didn't recognise me with a hat on, but I've taken a leaf out of the great um, resident saxophonist at Cozy's. Um, Duke Silver, wear a hat, brilliant disguise. So yeah, I knew I was going to go for one of these. It's a stag. This is about five foot, by the way. So I've got it. I've got it with the pin all the way in, so it's seated. It will easily fit on the boat. I've got a box that goes with it, and so it actually packs away to quite small. These arm things help support it, and it it it's very comfortable, and I think it's fantastic. So I was joking before when I said I wouldn't have one on the boat. I knew I was going to go for one of these. It's a stag three-quarter, which is the, the normal size, 41-inch uh, uh, scale, 105, 104 centimetres. It's the stag three-quarter EUB, electric upright bass. Um, this one is actually the Gear for Music one. I got it from their B stock. So these things, um, I think Toman also do them. They do them, you can get them scrolls at the top. It's slightly different. So and you can get posher versions of this. It goes from about £400 to about 750 I got a B-stock one, although to be quite honest it's fine, although there is an amount of work I want to do with it, like getting the nuts all the stuff, because at the moment it's really hard to press down on that. That's my excuse for making those mistakes. Um, so I got a B-stock for about £300, and I'm really, really happy with it. I got a case for £24. It will pack away. It's absolutely perfect, because the key thing is I could get one of those uh, ukulele basses, and they sound great. If you plug them in, they really do sound like double basses. It's extraordinary, but they're only that big, so you're not going to learn the scale. It's basically, this is about the size of an aircraft carrier, and all the notes are hidden completely, so you have to guess where they are and learn. And that's, that's what I want to do, so that's really what this is going to do. 
So yeah, very, very pleased with this. Um, it was part of the plan and I'm surprised at how well it's worked out so far. So uh, if you do have a big boat, by the way, don't go and get a proper electric, don't go and get a proper uh, wooden upright base because basically, particularly say if you're in a boat, a big boat in Florida or whatever, where you've got plenty of room, um, the glue is hide glue and it's designed to come apart, it's designed to melt with either water or heat and in the humidity you'll get both. So what you will find if you do get one in one of the hotter climates and the humid places is you will end up with a kit every single day of your life because your double base will have just fallen to pieces and you'll have to rebuild it. But why would you want a double base? Well there's a very good reason and this is not going to work because I haven't used this thing before. Anybody who's lived downstairs from somebody who plays a double bass will know that a lot of the sound goes through the end pin. So if you imagine on the boat, the end pin, which is the thing on the floor, goes into the keel and the sound spreads out in the water. So people in the water will be able to hear it amplified. So you only need two notes for this, E and F, and I'm saying that just in case it doesn't work because I don't do retakes on this channel. Um, <laughs> My daughter, who is a marine biologist and a shark expert, will slaughter me for this joke. But basically what you do, if you want to clear the water and get the um, get all the swimmers out of it, how should I hold this? You basically, all you need to do is this. I can't believe that works. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, so I'm in trouble. Yeah, and the other thing is, you could earn a living out of this. I think I could earn a living out of this. Not from my playing, obviously, because as you've seen, there's a long way to go, but I am very pleased with this. It's like having a ventriloquist, you could do, do like a sort of ventriloquist act. So I could say, let's double ways, let's talk about favorite animals. For example, I love dogs. What would you say, I love? Let's start this again. Oh, I do do retakes. <laughs> oh dear. I honestly can't believe you watched that up to this point and now you're thinking about it, you honestly can't believe you watched up to that point. Let me know what's the strangest, largest, weirdest, most difficult thing that you keep on your sailboat. I did need to do that. <laughs> Sorry I had to share it, but um, that's the way it goes. See you next time. Look after yourselves. Be safe.